Welcome to my YouTube channel Modi Mechanical Engineering Tutorials. In this video, I would like to explain in details working onto a vernier caliper. So this instrument, it will be having a wide applications in the field of a linear measurements into any kind of workshop. So let us start with the introduction about it. So basically the principle of this instrument. So according to that principles, when two scales, so main scale and auxiliary scale, or you can say main scale and a vernier scale, or that division slightly different in size are used, and the difference between them can be utilized to enhance the accuracy of measurement. So the basic construction of vernier caliper, just you can see. So the whole body that will be made with a high grade steel materials. So let us start with the two scales that will be representing into a principle of vernier caliper that will be the main scale and auxiliary scale. So just you can see this 0, 10, 20, 30, 40 up to a 200 that will be representing as a main scale reading. So just you can see this is the main scale or you can say fixed scale. Second things, just you can see over here 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So that will be vernier scale or you can say auxiliary scale. And as from the construction wise, it will be movable. So movable scale or you can say vernier scale that will be sliding onto a main scale or fixed scale. Then after here two types of jaws are representing so fixed jaw and sliding jaw or you can say movable jaw. Basically these two jaws that will be used to measure a external measuring faces and at your top side the internal measuring faces. So if you want to measuring a internal diameter so these two jaws it will be expand and according to its uh, shapes it will be expanding and you should take a reading. So these two jaws that will be used to measuring a internal as well as the external surface measurement or you can say diameter measurements. In this kind of construction there are one more is there that will be a depth measuring blade. So by this depth measuring blade you should also take a reading for measuring a height as well as the depth of a cylinder or any kind of job. So this is the basic constructions. Once you fix your both the jaw according to the your job. So that will be one locking screw that will be available over here for locking a final position of both the jaws. And just you can see over here, it will be the fine adjustment screw is there. So you can take a very accurately readings. So this is the basic construction and working principle of vernier caliber. Now important things, the least count of this instrument. So this is my basic main scale and vernier scale. So according to the principle, the you can use a difference between main scale and vernier scale and for calculating the least count just yes, you can see so the value of the minimum divisions onto the main scale and divided by number of divisions onto a auxiliary scale or a vernier scale so if you observe this the value of the minimum division onto the main scale so that will be 1 mm and if you observe the number of divisions onto the vernier scale, so it will be 50. So finally, the least count of these vernier calipers that will be 0.02 mm. How it will be working? Just you can see, this is the basics of these instruments. So first of all, you should start with the zero readings before starting of any kind of measurement. So if you observe this, the 0, 0. So 0 from the main scale and 0 from the vernier scale or auxiliary scale. So this is the my instrument and this is the magnification 
of this area. So just you can see, 0, 0 it will be matched. So no any kind of 0 error, you should find. And after this, the fixed zone and movable zone, it will be expanding according to my requirement of the shape and measuring dimensions. So once it will be touch both the end of your surface of an object. Suppose this is my zero from a one year scale or auxiliary scale, it will be touches with the main scale. So just you can see it will be the 43 number onto a main scale. And if you observe the which number that will be matching with one year scale and a main scale. So starting always from the zero, one, two, three, and just you can observe that these 24 number teeth, it will be exactly matching with a one year scale as well as onto the main scale. So final, just you can see 43 is there onto a main scale reading. So total reading for this, so 43, that means main scale reading plus number of matching. So that will be 24 into least count. So 0 0.02, we already find that. So 40.40, it is there. So final reading that will be 43.48 mm for these objects. Let's see the examples. So this is my job and I want to measure a external dimension of this job. So as we already discussed these two jaws, it will be expanding according to these shapes. So you can easily find or you can say observe the width of this job onto a main scale and least count and from a vernier scale. If you want to measure a depth, so just you can see this is my road or you can say extension road or blade. So it will be easily entering into this. So that will be also used to measuring a depth. If you want to measuring a internal diameter, so just you can use this top side of the internal jaws. So for same instrument, you should use for a measurement onto external dimensions, then a depth or you can say height also, and as well as internal diameter. So these instruments, it will be having a wide applications in the field of any kind of engineering. Now important things into the measurements. So which kind of errors it will be generating into the one year calipers. So errors due to the play between the sliding jaw and a fixed scale bar. So you should take care about this. Errors due to the wear and wrapping of jaws. So that due to that number of times utilization of same instrument into the different environment conditions it will be possible errors due to the incorrect observations of scale readings so you should take some standard methodology for taking a readings so always the readings it will be at your right angles from your graduations so you should reduce the parallax kind of errors then errors due to the excessive force onto the moving jaws. So do not apply a excess amount of the pressure or force during the measurement. Then error in also introduce if the line of the measurement does not coincide with the line of the scales. So properly positioning the object with your fixed jaw and the moving jaw as per the standards are available. Then one more, no place should be there between the sliding and fixed zone. So if play exists, then accuracy of the vernier caliper will be lost. Then second, the tips of measuring jaws should not be worn. This is also important things. Use of stationary jaw on the reference point and obtain the measured point by sliding the movable jaw. So this is the good practice during the measurements. Then the vernier caliper must always be properly balanced into the hand and held tight lightly the sliding jaws through adjusting screw. And do not push the moving jaws under the pressure or use adjusting screw for the fine adjustment. Then 
in case of the measuring an outside diameter be sure that the caliper bar and the plane of the caliper joist are truly perpendicular to the workpiece longitudinal center lines so these all are the precautions if you take into the measurement with a vernier caliper so you should reduce the errors that will be generating during the measurement so i hope you understand the basics about the vernier caliper if you like this then subscribe and share modi mechanical engineering tutorials thank you so much and keep watching